ER physician Jumana Narguala was arrested last week and charged with illegally performing female genital mutilation on young girls from across the country, some of them very young. It's so disturbing that we are not going to describe it in detail, and it's even more disturbing we have to have an expert on this topic, but we do. Ayan Hersia Ali was born in Somalia. She was subjected to this at a young age. She has since come to the West and become a vocal critic of this practice and of fundamentalist Islamic beliefs in general. Ayan Hersia Ali joins us tonight. Ayan, thanks a lot for coming on. So, Taka, thank you very much for having me. So as far as I understand, this practice, which has been banned for 20 years, um, ha no one's ever been prosecuted for committing it in the United States. Does that mean it doesn't happen? No, it happens, and it happens a lot. Uh, I've started the AHA Foundation back in 2007, and girls have been coming to us, women have been coming to us, whistleblowers, pediatricians. We know that it happens. And I, first of all, have to say I commend the FBI on this particular case. In this case, there was a whistleblower in 2013 who said, you know, this is going on, and the FBI did a good job of finally catching and having enough evidence to prosecute this particular doctor. I think it's going to send uh, the necessary message to those who still continue to do it. But, Taka, unfortunately, there are 26 states in the United States that have no laws. There is a federal law, but there are these 26 states where, and it makes it easy for people who want this done to little girls to shop around. Uh, the family, some of the, the little girls that this particular woman uh, mutilated, uh, they were brought in from Minnesota, uh, where it is um, banned, to Michigan, where there is no proper ban. So there's a lot of work to do still. You know, this practice is so cruel and horrifying that I'm not even going to, and I don't want to, describe what precisely it is on television, but it's, it's truly awful. And I think any Westerner hearing about it would agree with that. Why has nobody been prosecuted? You sound like you've known and that it's maybe common knowledge among those who look to find the answer that it happens. So why has law enforcement not been on this? Well, I think it's because people don't really like talking about the genitals of little girls. And yes. I believe, and in my foundation, we believe we really do have to describe what happens. The clitoris of little girls is removed mm. and their labia are then sewn shut. This is done to kill the libido, the sexual libido of girls when they become teenagers and women and it's to ensure their virginity. That's what we need to know about it. Some people have religious reasons for doing it. They say it's because of Islam that they do, and others say it's because of culture or a mixture of that. That can never be an excuse to harm girls that way. Um, no, no, why hasn't... it's, it's absolutely horrifying, and I don't know why this isn't on the lips of every representative of every human rights group, women's rights group in America. This is so upsetting that I'm, not, I'm still baffled as to why we've ignored it. Well, we, the AHA Foundation, my organization, has gotten legislators to take up some legislation. You know, we've passed successfully legislation in several states. We are still lobbying. But what we come across is there's this crazy identity politics in the United States of America now. And when girls who are, you know, at risk of these horrible and horrifying practices, FGM is just one, but there are others, what we see is that people are willing to sacrifice the rights of these little girls in the ultimate of identity politics. It's very difficult for people to talk about the cultures and the religions and the harmful practices that are done by minorities, and this is happening to minority little girls. I, you know, I hate to think you're right, but I, I suspect you are. And to think the price that these children are paying for the prim sensibilities of our ruling class is really, really upsetting. So what is the penalty for those who are caught doing this, or the one person who's been charged with this? Well, again, we are really happy with this prosecution. Let's watch what happens. But I think what we need to do is to inform the American people. We try and educate pediatricians, teachers, law enforcement, you know, all sorts of service providers, people around children, that this is a practice that is increasing. There are 500,000 little girls today in the United States who have either undergone or are at risk of being subjected to this. We need help. Uh, my foundation can do way more, but yes. we don't have the resources, and we need help. We need money to get this going, to employ the right people, and to get a lot of people to lose their inhibitions and really stand up 
for these little victims. They're as young as five years old, six years old. They're taken away during the summer vacation to either their countries of origin or to states that have no penalties. That needs to stop. God, it's on well, our conscience. God bless you for doing this. So my producer just said in my ear, we just looked it up um, in the control room, and the federal penalty for this is five years. If there's any crime that deserves a serious penalty, I think it's this one. So thank you for making this public as hard to talk about it as it is.